Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. That'd be great. And check out all my videos on Bronco restoration. And I'm about to start modifying my 72 International Harvester Scout 2. Sorry for the color. Today we're going to be talking about leaf springs. And this is going to be deep, deep tech. But don't tune out because even you Bronco guys and Chevy truck guys and even you car guys who have leaf springs in the back, this applies to you. And I know for some trucks, the leaf springs look like this, if I may. And the only real difference there is this is called a tension spring, for obvious reasons, as it's going, it's pulling on the shackle. Whereas in the more traditional configuration, this is a compression spring because it's compressing the metal on the shackle. Why did I do this? Well, I was looking for this information. I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, I looked on the boards, and there are some forums that go into this detail, but you have to be able to translate the text into practical application, and that can be a bit confusing. Plus, there's this diagram that's going around the internet that's been used for decades, and it's dead wrong. This is the diagram I'm referring to. In principle, it's close. But I'll get into the shackle angle uh, theory that it proposes and tell you and show you why it's wrong. This is my board O leaves. Basically, I took Simpson strong tie lumber straps of different lengths, 36 and, and stepping down, uh, bolted them together, put an arch in them, and then tied them to some other uh, lumber. Um, slotted lumber straps, basically creating a leaf spring and shackle. What we're going to be talking today is about leaf springs, leaf spring arch, leaf spring dynamics, shackle length, and shackle angle. We won't be talking about spring rate, and this is why. First of all, spring rate really has to do with the metallurgy and thickness of the springs and how many there are. That determines your spring rate. These are the same types of metal and the same thickness and the same number of leaves, so they have identical spring rates. One common misconception is by arching or de-arching your leaves, you change the spring, spring rates. You do not, okay? The spring rate, the effective spring rate changes because your shackle angle changes. The spring rate is built into the spring. So that is a difference. Now, what do we have here? We've got one flatter leaf spring, which is more like my sprung over scout. And we have one arch leaf spring, which would be something you'd get in a lift kit for a Jeep or a sprung under scout. Why did I do that? Because it makes a huge difference on shackle dynamics and springs. So what we have here is we have a fixed end of the leaf spring. Okay, this is like your locating arm, like a control arm or a link arm. And that prevents the spring from going anywhere and it basically locates your axle. And then on the other end we have the shackle. And I've created a few different shackle mounting locations to show you the difference. I've got the distances here, 32, 34 and a half, 37 and four here at 29 all the way up to 34. And then I've got the different angles of, of the shackle depending on the length. On this slot, it's a four inch shackle. On this slot, it's a six inch shackle. So let's go through the exercise. I chose a specific location to prove a point. And that is, this is at 32 degrees. This is at 32 and a half degrees, close enough, right? Same shackle length, four inches. You notice a difference? Even at right height, you'll see this is at a much steeper angle. Why do I bring this up? Because one mistake people make is they get arched leaf springs, but they don't address their shackle mounting location. And that creates a rough ride or other undesirable dynamics in their leaf spring suspension. And I'll explain why. Let's start and go through the different positions on the flat leaf. First, at the four inch shackle configuration, this is the furthest back closest to the mounting bolt. At right height, it's at around 45 degrees. Fully flattened out, it gets pretty steep, okay? And then it droops with the weight of the axle quite a bit. Let's compare that to more straight up and down configuration, which is closer to what my Scout has. At right height, it's a mild five degrees. 
it doesn't change much when you compress it. That's because the spring's flat, see? And if I push it more beyond flat, it actually comes and gets shorter. And there's not much droop. And then at the extreme end, which you would never really run, okay? Compress, there's almost no action to this shackle. So that would obviously be a disadvantageous shackle angle. But let's switch it to a longer shackle. So if we take it from the four inch to the six inch shackle angle, you'll notice it's not nearly as severe. It's still not an ideal angle, but you get a tiny bit more action, but again, no droop and no real uh, compression. So this again is not an ideal setup. Moving to the more middle of the road setup. Okay, here at compression, you're at about 10 degrees. Not much change when you compress. Again, it'll get shorter if I push up all the way. And a little bit of droop, not a lot. And then here, about 30 degrees. You notice there's right away, there's a lot more action in the spring. And when I compress even more, and I get a good amount of droop with the weight of that axle pulling it down. So that's going to be a very springy, a very uh, wide range of motion shackle setup. Let me put it back in the original position. Okay. Let me fix that squeaking. So let's, the same position, 32 inches, with the much more arch spring. At right height, notice a lot of action. At compression, a lot of action. And then a droop, some action, not quite as much off the 90 degree angle. Okay. That's 12 degrees of compression on 32 and a half inches. Let's move it in a little closer. Now we're at 30 and a half inches. Okay. A compressed, whoa, big difference. 42 degrees versus 12 degrees at this position. It's a 30 degree difference. Okay. Compression, I'm topping out there, but you get the idea. A lot of action, a lot of droop. Now the extreme example, 29 inches. I mean, I, I can't even, if I had this, these bolts not here, it would go way up and I get a whole lot of droop. So a lot of action. So at the extreme position, you know, you're at about minus eight degrees at compression or at right height, and then at compression, it flattens out. You see it's starting to S here. That means it's pulling, right? So the, the location, sorry, it's pushing. So the location of this shackle is creating this S curve in the leaf spring. So that means that shackle length and location is absolutely wrong for this spring setup. Something to keep an eye out for. But, you know, it's a negative eight. There's not a lot of, there's some action and some droop, but it's not a good, that's not a good shackle position. Let's switch to the six inch shackle. A lot of action, a lot of droop. So it's 45 degrees at right height. I'm going to just skip a step here for the sake of brevity. So this is at 32 and a half inches. Much less action, less droop. And finally, at like a non ideal angle, you're over 90, or you're right about 90, okay? So some people like to run at 90, but not much action there. You get a lot of droop because it's, it's an arch spring. But again, you're starting to get that S bend because of the shackle location. So that's sort of running through all the different shackle lengths and shackle angles. Well, what does it mean? Well, one thing you can't feel at home is, we talked about spring rates a little bit, is when your shackle is vertical, meaning when it's 90 degrees, okay? And 90 is not me measured, it's measured uh, from this angle, here, not off of the leaf spring. So if you imagine a bar here compared to the shackle, that's your shackle angle. So it's about 90 degrees here, okay? The spring rate is one to one, the effective spring rate. If I 
I go and I put this here and get some angle on it, I have to push, push much less. It's a lot softer, okay? But the spring rate of the metal hasn't changed. The effective spring rate has changed. So the more angle you have, that one-to-one -one ratio starts changing and your spring rate goes down. This is where that diagram is wrong, because the way that diagram reads is, when you bring the shackle in towards the mounting uh, fixed end, it goes up, but that's not how it is in reality. You bring this angle towards the fixed end and the spring rate, effective spring rate goes down. Whereas the opposite is also true, which is the further away you get, the stiffer it gets. I mean, it takes a lot more effort. So that is an important point when you're deciding your mounting location and your mounting angle is the effective spring rate of the springs that you have. And again, that's why so many guys put lifted springs on and they're like, oh, my ride is so rough. Well, maybe it's just your shackle angle and you should play around with your shackle angle. So that brings us to the last bit of the segment, which is, well, Matt, how do I figure out my shackle angle? The problem is it involves trigonometry. Wait, 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 don't give up, okay? I know math is hard. Let's break down this equation together. What are we trying to measure? We're trying to measure the distance from the fixed uh, mounting point of your spring and the shackle angle of, your, angle of your spring. That's what you're trying to figure out. That'll determine your correct setup. The formula for that I have written down here in long, long text. I didn't use any abbreviations, but it's hanger distance equals flat spring length. Okay, that's the length of your spring when it's totally flat from eyelet to eye, from eye to eye, okay? That is 35 inches in my case here. Uh, it's a 36 inch bar, but the way I mounted the eyes, it's 35 inches from the center of this eye to the center of that eye, okay? You take that measurement minus the sine of the desired angle times the shackle length. Wait, wait, well, you can do this, okay? We know what the shackle length is, it's six inches. So the only thing that's a mystery is the sign of the desired angle. Let's break that down. What is the desired angle? Desired angle means where do you want your shackle sitting when you're fully compressed? In this case, 30 degrees. It's opposite of 90, so it's 60 degrees, depending on how you calculate it, right? But let's say it's 30 degrees. Well, okay. So I know my desired angle is 30 degrees. What is the sign of my desired angle? I'm too dumb to figure that out. So what I do is I go to, I go to the Google and I Google calculate sign of an angle and there's a calculator there. So you put in 30 and that'll tell you what the sign of 30 is. In this case, it's 0.5. We're getting close, okay? So 35 inch leaf spring, flat spring length, minus the sine of 30, so minus 0.5 times the shackle length, 6, equals, breaking that down further, what's 0.5 times 6? It's 3. 35 minus 3 equals 32. So now I know this distance needs to be 32 to get that desired shackle angle. Well, how do you pick a desired shackle angle? Where, well, that's where it gets into a bit of a mystery. What you need to know is at 90, that's pretty stiff. But in some applications, it makes sense because of the nature of the spring. With a bigger arch, a 90 degree angle, you still get good action, right? So your compressed flat spring angle is like at, you know, 20, 25 there. It's not too bad. Right, so 90, 25, droop, right? That's not bad for a very arch spring, but for a flat spring, you want to be more like that. Sorry, and you want a shorter, shorter shackle. You want to be there, right? And then you get lots of action even though your spring's really flat. There's one warning for this. The more extreme that angle, the lower your spring rate, so you'll get a lot of bounce, and that's why you got to find the right uh, combination. Some guys say 15 degrees at, at right height, 30 degrees compressed, or 30 degrees and 45 degrees compressed. 
That's the range you want to be playing in with flatter springs. With more arch springs, I'm not really sure, and I'm open to your opinions in the comment. But one thing is for sure, is the more extreme that angle gets, the more unstable your ride gets. So you'll get not good on-road behavior the more extreme your shackle angle is. So now that you kind of get the idea of, of the setup, you might have the question of, well, Matt, okay, I got the angle the way I want, and the theoretical action is how I want it, but it's still too stiff. So can I pull a leaf out of my leaf spring pack? You can. Um, if you call the leaf spring manufacturers like Deaver or Alkin, they'll probably tell you, we don't recommend you pulling a leaf. But if you have to, pull the second one here or the second one, the second shortest one or whatever their formula is. The reason they don't like doing that is because each leaf is progressively shorter, so it supports the leaf above it. Now if you pull, say, this one out, now the distance between the end of this leaf and the end of this leaf is greater, this middle part gets more stress, whereas this leaf supports this longer main leaf. But pulling those out will reduce your spring rate. So that is a way to tune your suspension. The ideal would be if you knew what your spring rate was for the pack you ordered to go order a new pack. But who's got the money for that? Um, the better thing, in my opinion, to do is take out the leaf, knowing what your original spring rate was, wheel it, break it, and then go order it once you break it. I mean, why not just enjoy it while it works? The dynamics, maybe not ideal, but it'll get you where you need to be. And obviously, shock tuning is important. The more springy your suspension, the stiffer your shock setup has to be. Um, and that's true for rebound too. And obviously, uh, the more angle your shackle, the bigger your droop, and the longer your shackle uh, travel has to be. So if you go and you change your uh, shackle and leaf spring setup, make sure you adjust your shocks as well. So this is very important for off-roading. It's also important for your muscle cars uh, because now you know that, you know, based on your shackle angle will determine how your rear end is acting under load, right? If you've got a super uh, steep shackle angle, right, then you're going to get a lot of resistance to the spring compressing because it's going to be a one-to-one -one spring rate. If you angle it, the spring will take up a lot but it'll want to rebound a lot too. So then that's where your shocks and tuning come into play. And the same is true for off-road. But the bottom line is, if you want more droop, you need more shackle angle. And if you get a lift kit where your springs are more arched than the original, and they're the same length as the original when they're flat, so the flat length is the same, but you've got more arch, you've got to adjust your shackle hanger location. I hope this tech was really interesting for you guys. Again, I'm super excited about this episode. Uh, shoot me any questions at mattsgaragehow at gmail.com. Leave a comment below. Hey, look, I'm not quite guru level. I'm trying my best to learn. So don't torch me if I got something wrong. I feel like I put a lot of good knowledge out there. I want you guys to go out and make your own Bordeaux leaves and show me how I'm wrong and teach the world more about suspension technology. Um, I'd love to see something like this about coils because that's way beyond my knowledge base. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Matt's Garage. Yes. Now the spring rate of the metal hasn't changed. The spring rate of the metal hasn't changed. I have the calculation and I'm gonna simplify it for you guys, right? So, Tim! In this case, 30 degrees. God! Uh, and, and go from there. Hold on one second, right? You're trying to figure out the fixed end versus the shackle angle. God! <laughs> okay.